Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's Bundesliga review. Yeah, we're talking only about one Bundesliga because Austria is still on winter break. Keep repeating that because uh, it's kind of a fun <laughs> state in a way. And most Austrians are at the moment uh, fo focusing on watching skiing. Uh, not me that much, although next weekend is the big race in Kitzbühel. Maybe I will watch that one. Although my favorite one was Wengen in Switzerland. Didn't see that one this weekend because I was watching way too much soccer. But we talk about German Bundesliga and I'm wearing my new Leverkusen shirt. I got it um, last week, exactly a week ago. And bah, I can already wear it because they had, at least statistically, the biggest win of the weekend. We also had a tinge of an excitement from Friday to Saturday. And then Bayern just rolled over Köln and said, yeah. The title is ours and uh that's gonna, gonna, gonna be but to me the kind of a, i was a little bit looking for what are the, the real stories and um there are two that stuck out i could have talked a lot about the bottom duel but i think both teams will go down unfortunately uh so for me it's only on berlin getting another pretty big win and uh they seem to be for real Honestly, uh, Union Berlin, uh, I know when they came up um, two seasons ago, I thought this they were kind of a little bit of a, I don't want to say a joke, but you know, I uh, didn't take them all too seriously. Uh, and thought, yeah, they, are, they will probably go down, although I should have known better at the time. Meanwhile, I know if a team from the uh, second Bundesliga comes up and also through relegation very, very often they stay in there. It's, it's the, the, the other two in, 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 in a way. And yeah, cult club story and so on. Um, I always thought for me, the Berlin team is Hertha, but the more I look at what Union is doing, um, not only are they a team, as I said, uh, with the, the fans built the stadium, there's a huge fan culture. If you look at their stadium, the Arte First Array, there's uh, three uh, stands, it's literally standing room, there's only one stand where you have seats. Uh, so there are many cool things. And, and the other thing that I really like about uh, Union Berlin is that at every game, the fans right on the center line have a banner where they make a statement that usually relates to the opponent or to recent events. And this is for me always a little bit of feeling the pulse of, 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 of the league. I actually really enjoy Union being in uh, the Bundesliga. And I think Berlin can definitely have two teams in the Bundesliga, although it's generally not seen as a football city, although it has a pretty big football culture. There is um, uh, uh, Copa 90, a great uh, video, almost an hour long, about football in per Berlin. And of course, the Hertha Union rivalry, which was never meant to be a rivalry because this was Eastern Berlin and Western Berlin and those uh, clubs and fans were actually friends while they were separated even then only when they started playing against each other. Now there's a little bit of a rivalry there. So yeah, uh, and having said that Union Berlin, I have a feeling that I probably sooner or later need to get a jersey so just eat them and so boring. It's like this Leverkusen jersey, uh, jersey. And you know, the one thing that this Bundesliga wall definitely does, that doesn't need is more red. Uh, it's so funny because it, the, the, this Bundesliga of all has uh, too much red, the one in Serie A has usually too much uh, blue. That's how it goes. Overall, it's very colorful. But yeah, uh, so for me, Union Berlin, can they challenge for Champions League? I mean, uh, Union Berlin are here to stay. I think, uh, at least for this season, I think they will stay up there. They are very well managed, a very well uh, clicking team. And I think it needs to be a major injury crisis, which they have been avoiding to really uh, knock them off there. So uh, they are, again, one of the stories of uh, the season. But yeah, uh, let's run through again. As I said, there was a tinge of excitement because Dortmund played actually in the nominal top clash between uh, Dortmund and Freiburg. They played really, 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 really well uh, and had Fre Fre Freiburg more or less uh, brushed off at the halftime. When Meunier uh, twice and then uh, Haaland scored uh, three goals, Freiburg pulled one back through Demirovic, but then Haaland and uh, Dahoud added two more uh, to make it a real proper route. And Dortmund, for the first time this season, I almost want to say, looking really convincing. And then, of course, the headlines were that Haaland, who has been rumored or kind of a little bit pressured by Dortmund, may have, you know, there have been some talks uh, externally. Yeah, we should. He should sign. We really want to sign. How I say, I wanna play. I wanna play. 
One thing it though is, uh, I'm not sure who has longer hair, meanwhile me or um, uh, Erling. Let's see. So yeah, at that point, you really thought maybe, just maybe, if now Bayern, who had been tripping up before, now they have to play Köln, which are really nasty to play against. And that one is true. The first few minutes, I mean, I saw the first few minutes, Köln really pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. The problem is that they don't have enough talent to then cover all the holes in the back. And exactly through one of those, Müller plays a pass into Lewandowski. Was thought to be offside, he was not. 1-0. Second, uh, the second goal also. Uh, wonderfully, I mean, you can see how Müller's orchestra is. He's, he is without having the ball quarterbacking uh, Bayern, which is so uh, amazing to see. I... I never realized uh, up until re recently how great a player Müller is without having, uh, you know, this step touch over there. But he's really, uh, he's an amazing player that cannot be described in words. You have to really see him. Then you thought there might be, a, again, tinge of excitement there. No, uh, Mark Uth's goal is just offside and it must have hurt so much because Curran was up until the point. They were in the game. However, you could always feel the banner better. And then if you see the finishing by Lewandowski um, on his other two goals, you just know both of these by Lier Sunday. You see how it looks so easy. It is not. He is an excellent, excellent player and uh, anything but another t uh, title in Bayern will come as a huge surprise. Mainz against Bochum. Uh, what a <laughs> crazy game that was. Not much happening then as a penalty given for Bochum, who have been actually kind of getting in, 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 in the game. And then Polter takes the ball away from, I think, uh, Pantelic, who wanted to take the penalty. Polter, who has actually played for Mainz, and then uh, he has sees his effort saved. Ah, horrible. And then right after that, then just then makes it 1 0 Mainz, and Mainz and actually see the game out kind of easy, easily. So that penalty, a huge miss. And yeah, uh, he got to feel sorry for Paul, but then said he brought those goals upon him. Uh, Leipzig having, unfortunately, no problem in Stuttgart whatsoever. Stuttgart maybe slightly getting back into it, but uh, they look very, very endangered at the moment to getting re re relegated. So, as I said, Union Berlin against Hoffenheim. Uh, the first two goals were both more or less own goals. I mean, the uh, the goal by Hoffenheim was a cross in the Baumgartel. Uh, one by the clear and he it gets into his own net, uh, kind of a weird deflection. And although the equalizer a few minutes later through, is given to Vogel summer, no, this should be an own goal for the goalkeeper because it hits the crossbar and then the back of the goal is head. It would not have gone in otherwise. I think these were really two um, uh, two own goals, but a very level game between really good sides. Uh, but Union Berlin, Union Berlin were just a tip better. A tick, tick better, and then through Prömel, everyone thought it's going towards a draw, but Prömel in the 73rd gets the go-ahead goal, and they actually could have made two or three because Hoffenheim then opened up and Union Berlin could not finish their, chan their chan chances, but uh, thought uh, a pretty much a statement win in, in a way because Hoffenheim have been really, really good. They were uh, in third place there. Now, a little again off the porch, uh, which Leverkusen to to gone. Who I didn't see the game because I I watched United against uh, play Villa. Who then win at Gladbach? Uh, will come to the second before that. Wolfsburg and Hertha. I it, it was an improved wall was for for once. Not losing, but to be honest, uh, the chances there that were missing. And then the end, they could could have lost it. Uh, yeah, they stopped their fall, and Hertha also not there. Uh, as for Leverkusen, uh, it was not a great showing. However, uh, in the second half, uh, they get their goals. They have a two-nil lead. They should have been three-nil because Schick missed missed with penalty, and then very late on, Deme by misses another one. So they had two penalties missed. Andre and Schick, of course, scoring goals. Who else is scoring for Lever Leverkusen? And Elvedi just pulls one back for Gladbach. So Gladbach's uh, short uh, upturn is now going down uh, again. Augsburg only won. Uh, Augsburg Frankfurt uh, tie, and then Bielefeld against Fürth. Bielefeld dominated the first half take the lead through Oku Okugawa, but then they, for once they're not watching watching leveling who is sent and he plows through uh, next to Andrade who just came from Lask to Bielefeld and he puts it 1-1 uh, more or less with the first 
uh, shot on goal. And then an absolute freak goal. Again, I think it should have come, come, come on goal. Gives Fürth the lead against the run of a run, a run of play, but then Castro with a great shot makes it a 2-2. Uh, another a wonderful, a wonderful goal, but probably too little for Bielefeld, who really would have needed the win and Fürth if they would have any chance. Also, I think a draw doesn't help either team there. Uh, we'll also talk, I mean, you get all the standings and stats then in the stats cast, but uh, I want to quickly talk about upcoming games. We have uh, the German Cup come, 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 come up, where I have to say Köln against Hamburg uh, really is a, a classic in a way. It's almost a standard tie for me. Uh, uh, 1860 against Karlsruhe also, the last Munich team is 1860. Mm -hmm. uh, has kind of a 90s flair to it for, for me. We have Bundesliga Turbis in Bochum and Mainz. They play again, so let, let, let's see if there's something ha happening. And then uh, another interesting one is, of course, the Berlin Derby. But uh, before that, Leipzig against Hansa Rostock. Hansa Rostock against Leipzig, that uh, it sounds like a whole lot, lot, lot of trouble. And then Hoffheim against Freiburg is also a pretty big one. So I think I have to say on Wednesday, there's a whole lot of good stuff. I mean, especially the Berlin Der Derby and Hoffheim Freiburg, those are two very, very good games. Um, as for what's happening on the weekend, um, a standard type would be leipzig Wolfsburg based on last season, but it is not at the moment. So I'm uh, Gladbach-Union, maybe uh, Hertha-Bayern should be, is never, has never been. So Hoffenheim-Dortmund it is. And there's some history as well, uh, fortunately for this time, uh, for the owner. I hope there will be no fans from Dortmund allowed there. So yeah, that was it for me. Ah, yeah, and there's also a, a southwest derby between Freiburg and Stuttgart, but I guess this will be the point where Freiburg will get back into it. So yeah, that was it for me from the weekend. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!